Grow CFO is where finance leaders grow together. Join thousands of like-minded professionals using Grow CFO to access the combined knowledge and experience of the finance leader community. You can join us today, growcfo.net. Hello and welcome to the Grow CFO Show. I'm your host, Kevin Appleby, and today we're going to be talking AI again. But a little bit more practical, how do you actually go about implementing AI in your finance function? And I've got Nicolas Boucher with me. Welcome to the show, Nicholas. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, happy to be here and also happy to share with you and all of the people listening and watching everything I've learned the last 12 months and maybe the last 15 years about finance, but recently much more how can we can use AI in finance. And that's been quite a 12 months, really. It's barely 12 months since ChatGPT came on the scene. A huge shift and loads of other apps have come up that have all talked about themselves as being AI enabled now. Now, there's so much happened. I can't remember a single year where there's been such a big shift in technology, which must be leaving a lot of folk behind the curve and wondering how to get into using it. But before we go into that conversation, Nicholas, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so actually, I'm a finance guy like you and a lot of people listening. I worked 15 years in PwC as an auditor and also at Thales, a French multinational group, which is a bit like Boeing, but French. And what I always was passionate about, even before working, is to help people grow. I was a coach at soccer or football. I help young kids. At the university, I was helping my friends succeed their exams, especially the accounting one. <laughs> and at PwC, I noticed that one of the good way to succeed as a manager, but also just as a team member, was to help each other and coach people to grow. And when I went to the corporate side, I continued doing that, but I felt that I could not help that many people because maybe I was having contact with 10, 20, 30 people. I was a bit frustrated because I really felt that my skill, my main skill is to help people grow. And that's why I started on LinkedIn to post, to share my insights. And there was really one moment where I posted something much more visual than just writing about finance. I made something really simple that people could understand, but really visual. And there was really like at this moment, I felt that it resonated with a lot of people online. And I thought, okay, maybe actually this way of sharing information online is something that can work to help more people. And instead of having an impact on 10 people, then I could have an impact on, on thousands of people. And that's where I consider that a better way for me to have an impact in this world. So the last two years, I work really on that every day, being consistent on sharing my post. And I think this was really what changed also my career because now I'm working for myself. I'm training people on finance, but more especially now on how to use AI and ChatGPT for finance. And what I do is, because I, I'm a fan of technology, but I'm also an experienced finance manager, I know where we can use technology in finance. And I just open the eyes on people and show them practical ways on how you can use, for example, ChatGPT in your daily work in finance to make your work faster, or to provide more value, or even just be more creative and learn new ways of being a better finance professional. Okay, sounds fantastic. You and I have very similar passions, a very similar background, because we're both XPWC. I got into training because I ended up going to a lot of clients and finding out that things that I thought were pretty easy to do, questions that I asked the finance people there, you know, what does this process cost you? No idea, Kevin. Okay, here's how we work out how this process, what this process costs you, using some fairly simple techniques, which I then ended up teaching in the classroom. Like you, I got frustrated by, I'm only teaching these people face to face. I want to teach a lot more. And that's was really came together when we hit lockdown. I met Dan Wells and Grow CFO was born. And that's really what that's all about is taking what you can do with a few people in the classroom to a lot of people online. And like you as well, I love tech. 
Chat GPT for me has just been a fantastic invention. I've used it in so many places in the last year, but I'm not working day to day in finance anymore, Nicholas. So assume for a moment I'm the finance person who is, I've heard a lot about this technology. I'm thinking, oh, I'm sure I can use it somehow. Yeah. What do I start doing with it? So basically, even if you are not a finance person, but you listen to us now, the first part you need to know is how to become an advanced user. And the mistake that 90% of the people do is they use ChatGPT like Google. So they will just go inside and type some keywords. But ChatGPT is not Google. It's not there to give you a website. It's actually, you should consider ChatGPT like a team member. And let's imagine that we work together and we need to draft a dunning letter for a client who didn't pay since two months. If I go on Google, I will just type Dunning letter and then I will get a template, but I will need to find the right website. I will need then to go on the template, maybe to give my email address and then download the document and copy and paste, change it. So it's quite a heavy process. If you go to ChatGPT, don't type Dunning letter. Instead think, okay, imagine that Kevin is ChatGPT and I will not just tell you Dunning letter, I will tell you, hey, Kevin, you know that I am an accountant, so I give you the context. You know that there is this client, he didn't pay me since two months. Can you draft a Dunning letter? And just by tweaking that, changing from asking keywords to request a specific task, you just get much more value. Because now ChatGPT is going to write for you a template for your needs on the Dunning letter you need. And then after that, you can go to a more elaborated way of using ChatGPT. You can say, okay, ChatGPT, you need now to act as my lawyer because I want to have a letter that has more impact. I also want that you use words like legal actions. I want the letter to be brief, but to also show a timeline of what can happen if the person doesn't pay. And now, like I will have done with you, Kevin, I will have tell you a bit more and give you more context and explain you more about my expectations. And by giving that, so being more elaborated in my prompt, I get 10 times more value. And now I'm becoming an advanced user with ChatGPT. And what I just told you, it's a lot of people need six months to learn it, but that's why in my trainings, I start with that because you can become an advanced user really quickly if you get that, that the more yes. specific you are, the more context you give and also the more examples you give to ChatGPT on what you expect, the better will be the output. So what you're learning is how to ask questions. Yeah. And then yeah. once you learn that, it opens the door for everything. But again, you need maybe three to six months to open your eyes on what is possible. But what is possible is actually... Everything you need to write, and it takes you more than a few minutes, just think to use ChatGPT first. Make sure you don't use any confidential information, but if you take that away, you can write a lot of, let's say like now it's budget, you can send instructions with ChatGPT. Let's say you are a CFO, you need to prepare in front of the board what you are going to say. You can ask ChatGPT to help you with that, either draft the slide or maybe draft a speech. Let's imagine the example of the Dunning letter we had, and I want to call the client. I can ask ChatGPT to write the script for me. So like this, I'm prepared and I have more arguments next to me in case the client starts to argument about why he's not paying. You can think about procedures. That's actually something I love is to show people how you can write procedures and SNOP and memos with ChatGPT. And this a lot of people will try again. And because ChatGPT cannot give the answer straight away because it's limited in the number of characters, they will be frustrated and will think, ah, ChatGPT is not for me, it's useless, I cannot get a lot of things done. But there are some ways, some methods, for example, using chunking, which is a prompt engineering technique. So it sounds a bit like techy and hard, but if you ask people, is just take a big problem and cut it in small parts. Okay, tell me a bit more about chunking. Because the model in front of you or the computer in front of you has limitation on resource. You cannot get 
inside more than four to 8,000 characters. So let's think like a long email or blog article. And also you cannot get outside of it more than four to 8,000 characters, which means if you want to write a procedure, it's too small. And if you ask ChatGPT write a procedure, it will just give you like a small excerpt, which is not the procedure you want. So instead, you need to think, let's write a book. And when you write a book, you start by defining the outline. And once you agree with the outline, then you do part by part. You write that. With ChatGPT, you maybe also give the structure. Like this, ChatGPT doesn't write freely, but follows your structure. And then each time you ask it, chapter one, then chapter two, then chapter three. And like in these four to 8,000 characters, it will draft you the chapter. And after 10 to 12 exchanges, you have your procedures drafted that you can use for your company. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. And I'll be honest, that's a technique that we've used in Grow CFO. And I've taken some of the things that I used to teach in the classroom. And I've got PowerPoint slides lists of bullet points on them, things that describe, and you'd quite easily, just on the basis of maybe a dozen PowerPoint slides, go into the classroom and you can teach for an hour. It doesn't give you the teaching skills that you need to learn, but again, you could ask, okay, can you help me brainstorm on an icebreaker? Yeah. And you can open your eyes and, oh, I didn't know that this icebreaker is possible. After you still need the energy to bring and to go in the class and move people, but it gives you a lot of tools. But if you're going to say, I need now to write an online training course based on what I did teach in the classroom live, I've got the PowerPoint slides, great. Let's take that list of bullet points and put those into ChatGPT and say, please write me a lesson based on these six bullet points. Bang. Providing it's something that's reasonably well known. For instance, I had a load of slides teaching the seven wastes of lean. You can very easily, because that's something that ChatGPT can go and find on the internet, find loads about, it can quite easily bring you back quite a good lesson that will pull out all of the points that you told it to that you would normally talk about in the classroom. I think like to write is really powerful. Another example also is what actually I love the most is how to solve problems with ChatGPT. Yes. And when you think like, We often in finance, we get problems, but if we go in the board or if we go to talk to the operations or even to the CFO, we not just say, oh, we have a problem. Like it's expected from us to come up with propositions. And the thing is, if you are a junior or if you are new to your team, or if you feel a bit that you lack ideas or structure, ChatGPT is a great way to open your eyes on what is possible and to help you look for solutions and act like a mini project manager next to you, plus somebody experimented in inventory, plus somebody who knows all of the KPIs, plus somebody who is the best at communicating, plus somebody who knows how SAP work. And you have a team next to you, just like a few words away in ChatGPT, that you can ask and consult. and say, okay, I want to optimize my cash before year end because we are far away from our objectives. What is the best plan to achieve that? And then you might work first on inventory and then get an action plan with the operational team. Then you might work on collecting those receivables that are since a long time not paid and get a plan again and maybe work on these low-hanging fruits and find the priorities and the good ways and strategies and tactics to do it. And doing that is going to bring you much more value than starting from zero or from scratch. And what also I really like, each time you go on a topic, it's not just giving you a plan. You can ask, okay, now give me maybe the 10 best metrics to follow up inventories. Then for each of these metrics, what should the operation team pay attention to to improve them? And so you can engage discussion, even if you are not expert on a topic, you can help your operational team open their eyes on what is possible and study if maybe we can here change something to improve things and get closer to your objectives. Indeed. And I suppose one one thing that I do sometimes ahead of a podcast, if there's a topic that I don't know very much about myself, I think, hang on, I'm going to need some good questions to ask the guest potential questions in hand. 
go in and type in the topic a little bit that you know about it and say, ChatGPT, give me some good questions in an interview about this. And it will come up and it'll give you half a dozen decent questions. Flip that round to how can the finance leader, the CFO do this? It's there's something on the board agenda. Marketing have brought something up. Sales have brought something. Even production have brought something up. You're not an expert in that. You know that you want to go in there in a board meeting and just ask that question that can have a look under the stone and see what's hiding there. Before you will have done your Google search or read, maybe let's imagine that there is a machine that doesn't work in your production anymore. And you just hear a lot of excuses for not making things happen. Maybe you just research a bit on, okay, what are the possibilities to as a solution for this machine? And you can, like this, come to your meetings, like you say, much more prepared and much also more, I would say, curious about what is possible and show to people that they need to come with a solution because you have already looked into it yourself. And that's really helpful to stop losing time on theoretical solutions, but go directly to something that could work. ChatGPT, you can sign up and get a free account. Is the free account good enough? Everything I show is enough. It's actually even, it writes much faster than the ChatGPT4. The only limitation is you cannot create, you cannot also read documents. So there is this function called advanced data analytics, which was before code interpreter, which basically can read something else than just text. So it can read images, it can read PDFs, it can read a CSV file, so commerce separated value file, can read Excel files, it can read, I think, Word document. And if you have, let's say, a list on Excel that you want to deal with, and this list, you don't have any confidential information on it, then you could get ChatGPT to analyze the list just by uploading it and ask ChatGPT maybe what are the outliers inside, can you group some of the lines by category? And what ChatGPT will do, it will use Python to make this work. And now we don't have the black box anymore of sending something to ChatGPT and just get an answer. We see exactly ChatGPT running the code in Python so you can audit what is happening. And this also removes the fact that you are not sure if the calculation is correct. You are not sure what happened behind. No, now with the Python code in front of you, you can audit the result and see if the formula used and the model used is the right one for what you asked. And then you can even, if you are smart, think, okay, if I can do that in ChatGPT with non confidential information, you could open your eyes and say, what about if I do that in my own environment in Python with confidential information? Because you just got like the same example of what you want to do. You just got it in front of your eyes. ChatGPT did it. So you can always copy and paste or think, okay, let's just replicate that in my own environment. And that's a great way to make ChatGPT your friend and your assistant to make your analysis better. Okay. So we've gone from very simple to quite sophisticated. We've started off looking at potentially Dunning reports. We said, let's take this a bit further. And chat GPT, can you write me some legal sounding letters? Then we've talked about the example of having to pair things about the budget instructions, things like that. Straightforward documents. We can ask chat GPT to do those for us. That all sounded like fairly simple, quick things that we can do free with chat GPT 3.5. So we've gone now and said, okay. What's worth paying for in ChatGPT4 is this ability to upload documents. But you've mentioned something in there, Nicholas, about Python. Now, does that mean that a key skill for finance going forward will be to have a working knowledge of the Python language? So I have, uh, for everybody, including you and me, I have a, a good and a bad news. <laughs> The bad news is, yes, we need to know Python. It's like pivot table for a few years, like five to 10 years ago. Everybody saw that as, oh, like it's just a new function in Excel. But now if you don't know it, you are basically just a really beginner in Excel. 
And you just cannot use Excel efficiently if you don't use Pivot Table. And actually a good tip, if you don't know yet how to use it, or if you want to learn more how to use Pivot Table, just ask ChatGPT how to do it. Give it yeah. a bit of context, give like the structure of your file, and it will tell you exactly how to do it. And that's one of the way of using ChatGPT that I also teach, how to make ChatGPT your best dedicated teacher for all of the tools you use. Because you can go on Google, get YouTubes or forums explaining what is the method to do a pivot table or formula in Excel. But it doesn't answer to your problem. It will just tell you the theoretical way. And so you yeah. have to figure out after in your file how to do that and what is yeah. the correct way. How do way I apply this to most my problem? problem? Now, if you tell the ChatGPT, look, my file looks like this. There is all of these columns and this, the type of data inside are like this. ChatGPT will tell you, okay, if you want to get an average sales on all of your orders using Pivot, just select this table, put this field in the Pivot there, use the function average, and you have the result. Which now, if you are curious enough and you don't know how to use Excel, you can become a really good user really quickly with ChatGPT. And so if we come back to my bad news and my good news. So the bad news, you need to learn Python. The good news is you don't need to learn how to code in Python because you have the best coder now next to your fingers, at the touch of your fingers, because you can ask ChatGPT to code Python for you. And what you just need is a minimum understanding of what is happening, a minimum understanding of what is possible to do in Python. And again, ask ChatGPT to help you understand that. And then you can open the realm of possibilities of Python, which is today the best code and the best tool to automate finance. And I really say automate finance. I'm not saying just like automate one small task of finance. It can read PDFs. It can talk with APIs, with other tools. It can even get AI to work like Python is the language used also to code some of the AI tools or to make AI tools run. And it can do all of the Excel functions and it can also do all of the visualization from Excel and it can create files, it can combine files, it can change files and it can do forecasting. And on top, it doesn't have a limitation of 1 million lines like Excel. You can do that on like much more, much bigger data. I hope that was convincing enough that you need to try it. <laughs> yeah, and we've actually in Growth CFO introduced what we're calling the Automation Accelerator. And as well as teaching Power BI, which we've done for a while, it's going to include in the future teaching Python for Excel and Microsoft Copilot. Because yeah. those, I think, will be the two tools that, that come up. You know, I had, last podcast, I had a long chat with Adam about Copilot, and we queried whether it would become to the same fate as the little paper clip that used to appear in all the Microsoft documents, if you remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it will become it, the same fate. I think it will accelerate the use of generative AI. And I also teach Python and how to use it with my colleague and partner, Christian Martinez, because we want really people to start now to use it. We just want, don't want to say, Oh, it's possible. We want to show people how to do it. And the number of people that we open their eyes and after they come back to us and say that they have implemented so many use cases to automate their finance or even like myself, I made my accountant work less by just automating some of the tasks that he is doing. I say, okay, don't do it. Let me do it in Python. And then I, you get the CSV file that you can transfer in your accounting software and you don't have to work anymore on this so you can just focus on optimizing the rest exactly That's and it's the challenge i think isn't going to be learning necessarily the tech it's going to be spotting all of those tasks that you can automate yeah right. so if folk have got really interested in this discussion and want to know more about learning chat gpt nicholas you talk about your courses how can folk find out more about those I think everybody, if you don't know me yet on LinkedIn, just follow me, Nicolas Boucher, so Nicolas Boucher, or just like ChatGPT for Finance, Nicolas Boucher, you will find my course. It's a really practical course where it's 25 videos of five to 10 minutes. All of what I explain you in this podcast, I show you how to do it. Plus 
more and it's really practical for finance so you can use it straight away in your job. What I also have is another course more advanced with Christian Martinez, which we teach live in two sessions of two hours, how to use ChatGPT for advanced analysis together with Python. And people who never use Python, at the end of the course, they know how to use it. And it's not a programming course, it's really how to use Python like you will use ChatGPT to make your work better. And the last thing I just launched is for everybody who really is motivated to stay at the top on how to use AI for finance. And we have a lot of CFOs, but a lot of also FPLA managers and controllers. We launched the AI Finance Club. And there, my goal with this is to keep everybody updated on what is happening in AI for finance. So really specific to finance because it changes every day so much that people cannot keep up. But also I will bring experts to show us how you can automate reconciliations, how you can make sales forecasting using AI, what is the best tool to automate your presentations. When Copilot will be on, we will also show how to use Copilot. And the goal is every week to update people, to give them a mini course or to give them insights and actually to learn a lot from each other because we have people that are also themselves, they keep themselves aware and they bring so much value, so much knowledge, so much use cases. And the fact that we have this community, it's really powerful. And even myself, I'm learning a lot. Yeah. And this is the thing at the moment. I wouldn't say there's any such thing out there as an expert in any of this. There are so many different things to learn. There will be somebody who knows more than you do in every little bit. Yep. Probably nobody who knows the totality. So I really do think the way it's developing so fast, there's a lot to learn from each other. That's why my goal is every month I will bring somebody who really is the expert of on one topic. And I also want to bring people that are outside of finance. Because if you see what people do in the sales area or in IT or even in procurement, there is a lot to learn from other, I would say, functions. and. I think CFOs are smart enough to figure out, okay, if sales got that, we can implement that in finance, or even just know what is possible for sales, then go to their sales team and say, look, if you work like them, we can get to our goal better, uh, faster, maybe save money. And they will have this also an impact on their organization. And that's what I want also for all of the finance people. I think we are really good at technology generally. And we could be really driver of this change and not only in finance, but also in organizations. And I think that's very true. Because a lot of us are very comfortable sitting, staring at the screen all day, looking at an Excel spreadsheet and making the spreadsheet do stuff. What we're probably not that good at doing is teaching other people how to do the same thing. And I think that's probably a skill set that finance need to learn. How no, do you, I don't, I don't know. People, like a lot yeah. of people I know, actually, maybe because we are educators, but a lot of people are passionate to also transfer those skills to others. And I found in our community a really, what is the word in English? In French is bienveillant. So really people are positive and open to share without thinking, oh, somebody is going to steal my knowledge. Somebody is going to take advantage of me. I really feel in finance, people are willing to help the others without asking anything. And I think that's true. Yes. Companies, I saw that as well. A yes. lot of people were taking care of not of their business and not of finance topics, just because in finance, you are at the crossroad of all of the topics. And so your ERP well, the client, the problem. So you will go out of your comfort zone just to make things happen. And that's people that have also much like a great career and navigate well in organizations. Yeah, I think that is something I've spotted certainly over a long career in finance, going back to the days that to get any decent analytics out of a system, you had to write code in SQL to get the stats out. And I can remember times thinking, this code doesn't, I think I've got this code, but it, it, no, this answer can't possibly be right. And go off and find somebody else. Like, yeah, Kevin, you've got that line wrong. Try that. And I think what you've got to pick up is an attitude that Give first, and then if you keep giving and giving, you'll get back. People will always feel as though they owe you a debt. 
And that's very useful to have around when you need a bit of help. Yeah, yeah. When it's a rush of budget or closing and you need to ask somebody to get the information you need, then you need to have a bit of goodwill uh, before. Exactly. Yeah. Remember when I helped you with that last month? I need a favor back now. <laughs> so, Nicholas, we're at the beginning of 2024 as this podcast goes out. We've seen a huge change in the last 12 months. Move forward 12 months. What do you think we're going to see by the end of 2024? So I think two to three changes. First, what first Copilot will come. So meaning that when Copilot is available everywhere on all of the computer of, in all of the companies in the office environment, people will start spend less time working on, I will say, low value tasks and maybe create better work, create better value. Either they will have time for more analysis, either they will take more work, but it's going to help a lot of people. And the second part is outside of Copilot, ChatGPT, Bard, all of the other tools, they are going to start having this small chat where us human is much easier to ask the computer to do something if we use our own words instead of us trying to talk the computer language. And this is going to be a big shift. Imagine, I don't know if you worked in SAP, uh, Kevin, but in SAP, is you need for each transaction to understand how the transaction works, which parameter to enter. Yes. And now SAP is going to come up with a uh, jewel. And then you can just ask SAP, can you extract another due report with maybe the aging bracket and just by saying that, you get your report. You don't even need to enter all of the parameters or to know the transactions. You will get it. It's going to change also that some users will have less work because somebody who were used to ask this user, please generate the report, they will just do it themselves. But it will also, we will have more access to data in finance because we will do more in the same time and we could generate more analysis and act more. So now that you have no excuse anymore to access the data, it will be expected from you to act more. And yes. the last part, I think is automation. The example I gave you with Python, you could today, you don't need IT or you will not need IT anymore to automate a lot of tasks. And like a lot of small business or even mine, I have a lot of automation when somebody subscribe. I have an automatic email. They get enrolled automatically to another tool. All of this is available already, the technology. So now imagine that you get a sales order. The invoice can go automatically to the client, even if you're a small company. Then two weeks after or three months after, you can have automatic reminder. So you don't need to have your dunning process anymore. It will be automated. You can make two software talk to each other with API or with a script that you will make and write by ChatGPT or any other tool. And before you didn't know how to write the script, you still don't know, but you will ask ChatGPT to do it for you. And then you'll have a script after one hour or even 10 minutes. And that is going to liberate a lot of time and make us automate this task. And we will not have excuse anymore to not focus on the right topics. So the lesson here is if you're not using ChatGPT already, then get in there, do something, play with it. And if you are using it already, get in there even more, experiment and see what you can do. And we've talked about the courses that Nicholas runs. We've talked about the Grow CFO Automation Accelerator. We'll put links of, for, to both of those in the show notes. And really, the, I think the 2024 challenge is to make sure that this stuff inside out, because this is where the future is. Yeah, just make it your assistant, not the assistant of somebody else. And one small trick, if you don't know where to start, just journal one day all of the mini tasks you do. And then the day after, you go back through this task and you try each of the tasks to do them with ChatGPT or Bard. And some of the tasks you will say, ah, oh, yeah. it's not really useful to use ChatGPT for that. But some of the other tasks you will think, what? I never thought ChatGPT could help me with that, yeah, but it think, makes faster and better than me. So why not using it? And I think one of the things we're definitely going to see 
over the next 12 months is more and more applications that we use that are somehow chat enabled. I've already found a great one. I use a product called Otter every week to transcribe the audio in the podcast. For the last few weeks, Otter has had a chat function, which has been great. I've been able to say, Otter, give me a summary of this conversation suitable for podcast show notes. A few paragraphs come out and I think, okay, write some more about this particular thing that we were talking about. And what used to take me an hour, suddenly it's taken me 10 minutes. And they're better show notes than I could have written. <laughs> yeah. The value is in the discussion, not in you rephrasing what happened. So again, like this time you can spend talk with more people and learn more and also share that with more people instead of just spending time behind a computer rephrasing. And we transfer the creation of value to us and the low value activity to the robots, which is the way that exactly. should happen. That's the way it's got to go. My job is to get this podcast in front of more people, not to worry about writing good show notes. Exactly. Yeah. Nicholas, you have been a fantastic guest on this week's Grow CFO show. Thank you. Thank you. It was great also to talk to you and also to help people open their eyes on what is possible. And I think my goal is I believe finance should lead that in business organizations. And I hope this podcast will help some of the people be the pioneer in their organizations and also just for themselves, get better at their work by using a tool that is really valuable and also that prepares you for what is coming by being more ready than the rest. So I hope it will help all of the audience and maybe somebody here who listened to us will reach back to us and we will learn from them as well. Absolutely. Nicholas, thank you once again. Thank you, Kevin. Have a good day. <music>